Hello everyone, my name is Katerina Monda. I'm a public relations consultant here in Milan, working with young designers, creative small businesses in Italy. I'm here today with Osana Visconti, designer, artisan in her foundry in Milan, and we're going to talk today about her bronze pieces. Thank you, Osana, for being with us today. Hello everyone. Thank you, Katerina, for having me. So I wanted to start quickly to talk about how you started this uh, journey, this creative journey. I know you were born in Rome at a very young age. You were always surrounded by art and beauty, being in Rome of itself. But I know your parents are avid art collectors. Was, uh, was that know, the when moment? You, when you, I was lucky to be born in Rome. So when you grew up in such a town, you cannot be um, not amazed by the beauty and the art and the, that are in, in Rome. It's, you know, Rome is incredibly um, full of uh, uh, ancient ruins, frescoes, uh, palazzos, baroque, uh, and, and I remember that, um, and I was always fascinated by that, and I remember my father, he used to take us around on Sunday during my sibling and I to see all the secrets and the beauties of Rome. And this, I was really, I adore that. And I still remember that with, uh, with uh, big love. Absolutely, and I mean, Rome, and a childhood in Rome is the most magical, I would think the most magical experience. Yes. Was that the time for you when you started your creative journey? Did you know then at an early age that you wanted to be a designer? You wanted to work with your hands? No, or? I didn't know that at that time, but I know that I was attracted by beauty. In also, I must say my family, they influenced me a lot because my parents, they used to buy uh, to, um, works of art, of contemporary artists, uh, jewelry of contemporary artists, so we were always in influenced by that. My, my dad, he, he was an architect and a, an engineer, and he used to collaborate with many artists at, at the time. So uh, we, we've been so many times to their atelier and to see um, how do they produce their pieces, uh, painters or sculptures. I remember that I, when I was like, 20 years old, um, we went together with my family to visit Lalanne, you know, Xavier and Francois Lalanne near Chantilly, near Paris. And when I walked in that uh, atelier, in their house, full of pieces of bronze, I was really amazed. And I, I really was touched by that experience a lot. That's amazing. So for you, I, I know something very like you that you like to distinct yourself as a designer and an artisan. Is that correct? Yes, because it's difficult to me to say what I am, because um, I'm not a designer in a way that I don't do industrial design or um, pieces that are produced in, a, in many numbers. But um, I also am not completely an artisan because, you know, uh, you have to know skills and you, that are very complicated and difficult. But I work with my hands at the same way. So I mold the wax with my hands. So yes, my tools are my hands, but then I need an um, artisan that I um, collaborate with to produce my pieces in bronze. So yeah, you produce the works here in the foundry. Yes, so I come here and we continue with, with my artisans and friends now, uh, the, the production of the pieces. Okay, wonderful. You give that human touch with the artisans and of yourself. Yes, and I supervise the, the procedure uh, to the end, but um, I work here a lot with them at the beginning especially and at the end. Um, during the, the wax molding and the sizzling of the bronze piece. That's amazing. And here specifically, they are experts. Yes, these this is an artistic foundry uh, where young guys, young artisans uh, work for many Italian artists. 
like Penone, like Pomodoro, uh, Gabriella Crispi, she used to work here. And so I'm very honored to be part of this group of talented person who produce their pieces here. Absolutely. And was it hard, is it, is it hard to find artisans nowadays? in Italy or like... Yeah, you know, this kind of job, it's not very well known because uh, young, the young generation uh, is not, they don't follow so much the steps of their fathers. And this is, this is a pity because uh, this craftsmanship is going to be lost. And I think it's very important to be, to to let know uh, the public and the people that this still exists and we have to um, help them to continue to follow this uh, and to learn these techniques, otherwise they will be lost. Absolutely. In fact, actually, Ital Italy is famous, if we can say that, for, like, if we think of Italian excellence, we think of design, we think of craftsmanship, we think of quality, how can we, as like, you know, the new generation or people who are interested in the crafts and wanting good design, how can we educate ourselves to, uh, to learn to, about artisans? We, I think we have to continue and insisting and uh, we don't, to, to let them know, let know the people that these uh, artisans still exist because I know plenty of them that they are going to close. Many, many ateliers, many laboratories are going to close. But we don't have, we don't have to surrender because um, thanks to these people, to these artisans, Italian creativity can express its, itself. So I think that um, uh, also the, the government has to step and let know what is behind a piece of art, a piece of design, um, because uh, this is a very important um, tradition that we don't have to lose. Absolutely. And do you think with, because I know in our world we're moving towards technology, like a more advancement of technology, a digital age, do you think that could help? Artisans, yes. or what do you think about that? I think that is very important technology and all that, and it it could be uh, a, there could be a, a synergy between our uh, craftsmanship and the new technologies, and they could go well along to produce a um, piece of art. Okay, absolutely. In any field, in any anywhere. Field anywhere in any field, yes, because um, uh, there are um, specific artisans that people don't even know they exist, like chiseler, embosser, or um, this kind of foundries, um, or filigrane. These are all techniques that are very unknown to the new generations. Absolutely, I'm assuming in Italy and also internationally speaking. Especially, yes. Okay, and do you, and I know in Italy, what's beautiful about it, I love, is that every region has their own kind of unique uh, uh, yes. quality, unique. In Venice kind of, we have the glass. Exactly. Uh, these foundries are, uh, especially in Milano or um, also in Naples, also in Rome, there are foundries, but they're very secret. And in Turin, they work wood very, very, uh, in a very high level, very, very well. And all over Italy, there are still artisans, but they are suffering at the moment. They are suffering, and I love to discover them and trying to collaborate with them. Absolutely. And is this a family, are many, of, if you know, are many artisans in like family generations? Like, is this foundry specific? like father and son, or how, did, how do artisans usually find themselves and yes. get together? Uh, there is the Academy of the Belle Arti, but it's, uh, they, don't are, they don't have money enough to, be, um, to, for, to have the technology that we have now, and so they're, a bit, um, they're not enough uh, prepare, prepared they don't prepare enough the young generations. The, so it's, uh, for instance, these guys, they're all uh, son, sibling of the 
of the old generation who used to work here. So they learn this technique of, um, of the, which is the technique of the lost wax uh, from their father. Absolutely. And can you tell us a little bit about your lost wax technique that you use primarily um, for your pieces? Yeah, you, you make, it's a very old technique and you make the piece in uh, wax, then you cover with a sort of, um, of uh, clay and then you, it has to go into an oven which for one which stays for one week and then there is the casting pr procedure the casting procedure absolutely um, and then the piece comes out from the from the clay you broke the clay and it, uh, the piece has to be uh, sizzled so and then well and then and then the last step is the patina uh, you can have many different patina so it's a very long procedure. Uh, to make a piece, it, we need at least two months. Okay, wow. And it, it can vary, and your pieces vary from bookshelves to walls to yes, tables. You can, yes, uh, you can do any, anything you, you want because you, mm, you mold them with wax, which is a very um, soft uh, material, and then you do the casting. So exactly the piece that you do with your hands, as I said, my tools are my hands, you, you do it exactly and you see the shapes, the proportions, the sizes, and then you put it in the, the oven. you make it in bronze. Absolutely. You and cast it in bronze. Yes. And why did you choose bronze? What made you... Uh, because before I was using, I was doing jewelry, uh, so I used to um, do pieces in silver or in gold. But when I decided to, um, to do uh, pieces uh, for the house, so tables, objects at the beginning, and then occasional tables, now I do um, dining tables or screens or bookshelves and all that, uh, I think bronze is the most noble um, metal you can have. Absolutely, and you've always loved and because fascinated. it's alive. It's a metal that it changed, that it's alive, and you can uh, do so many different colors, so different patina, as I said, so 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 many different nuances, that it's really amazing. I love that. And metal, it's interesting because it's not a natural material. Let's say it's bronze. It's uh, it's mainly. Um, um, copper but there is a little uh, a little part of tin just to make it more liquid because when you have to pour it it, it has to melt absolutely and it helps make it more yes. manual yes. okay yes, interesting yes. yes so I wanted to ask you you started as a jewelry designer and then you went to furniture what made you bridge go from jewelry to furniture is there a different process also? Because as I said before, the technique of the lost wax technique is always the same. But I wanted, I was curious, you know, life is a trip. So when you see a lot of something, then you want to try and see something else, doing new experiences. So with the same technique, I tried to do objects, uh, always molding the wax. And then from objects, I continue to Okay, small occasional tables and then I continue to do um, always bigger pieces uh, but uh, I always um, use my hands as I use them to do the to do jewelry pieces now I'm using my hands to do the uh, tables or the bookshelves or any piece I do, I, I always start with my hands. Absolutely, there's no limit with the creativity. No, size doesn't no matter. Limit. Also because I was very much fascinated by the interior design. So um, I loved houses, I loved interiors since ever. And I, I wanted to put a piece um, created by me in my house and then Mm, little by little, I started to to create and do pieces for other clients, 
students who ask me to do this or that. So little by little, this became a real job. Absolutely. And now your daughter is following in your footsteps. Uh, yes, my daughter, she always used to sit next to me and playing with wax as well. So when I started to work in, in the interiors, she said, so I, I want to try, I want to do the jewelry collection. So now she does the jewelry collection and I do the home collection. So we, we are partners, we are friends, we collaborate, but each one of us does the or their own things. Um, and for and you're both based in Milan, you and Medina, just correct? Yes, we're both, both made, based in Milano, in the medieval neighborhood, because it was the most similar to Rome, and where uh, there are narrow, very narrow streets and the cobblestones. Um, so I, it remembers me a lot of the um, antique neighbor of Rome. Absolutely neighborhood. beautiful. It reminds me a lot of uh, the neighborhood uh, of Rome, where I grew up. Yeah, your childhood, absolutely. And it's like where heart of Brera, if that, is that correct? Is what? it in the heart of Brera? It's, no, it's the art of Capuccio. It's Via Capuccio. Um, so it's the Roman uh, ruins are there and then but now you can still see some Roman ruins and the medieval uh, some medieval ruins as well but um, the the shape of uh, the cut of the street is really still very antique very narrow very small and there are very nice uh, courtyards and palazzo so the atmosphere is very nice and that was the area of the goldsmith so the, the name of the streets are still the same of there used to be. From the antique times. Yes. Okay, interesting. And why, can I ask you, why Milan? Why did you decide to open, and both you and Medina decided to open in Milan? Uh, because Milano, I think it's a city with uh, very vibrant and full of energy and um, still have very old antique traditions, but it's uh, also uh, a town which look to the future and so to me this is very interesting and it's very it's a very good combination so knowing from where we come from but trying to look where we are going to so I think Rome is it's a, the most beautiful town in the world for me it's the most beautiful town for me but um, they don't look so much to the future. Milano, you know, the design, the uh, international communication, community. It, yes, inter, it's very international, international communities there and finance is there. So it's a good mixture. High energy, it's a absolutely, good, yes, absolutely. It's a good mixture, mixture of energies. And uh, what, are you, what are the exciting projects that uh, you're looking forward to? What are you working on? Can you give us a sneak, sneak peek? At the moment, um, I'm working on a, a very exciting project for me because it's a huge um, screen, very big screen, in bamboo, bronze bamboo sticks. So it's like six meters for three. So it's going to be like a wall, of, but very light and very natural, very organic of bam real bamboo that I went to pick them in a field and now we're producing them in bronze uh, and then we will do this big screen which is like moved by the wind. So this work is going to be a very big <clears throat> challenge for me because it's very heavy but it has to look very light and it has to be very romantic and windy like if the wind passed through the bamboo sticks. So it's uh, it's interesting for me to make a very heavy piece looking light. Absolutely. I love that a contrast between the material of itself and the naturalistic elements. Yes, I am very much inspired by nature. Um, I work a lot with leaves, with uh, bamboo, but always used in a very casual and natural way. Also, I'm producing two tables for um, for the for the states for um, out um, out New York, um, 
um, two round tables, and, and the idea is that the, um, the leaves fell on these tables. So they're very casual and they're very, um, very, very naturally, they posed on a surface which is the bronze surface. Okay. Can you tell us a little bit about your design process? For example, I know you take the leaves from nature when you were just showing me the bronze objects from before. You find them and then you cast them, correct? Yes. Leaves are all works of art. Uh, every single leaf is a work of art. So I love to go uh, on, in the countryside and pick the leaves that I like the most and I make the casting of every single leaf and I, for, I did a counter in London which is like seven meters of leaf, all, all different leaves that I put it together and now I'm doing the headboard of a bed always um, made by leaves that are all different one to the other so I think they're very nice because everyone has a different surface, a different shape, a different um, a bronze will give them a different color because, you know, as I said before, bronze, it's alive. So it's an alive metal. So the color changed through the years and that's really amazed me a lot. And what inspires you when you make your design? Um, you know, um, it's difficult to say what inspires me because um, they're all emotions. So when I see uh, the foliage of foliage, uh, for instance, uh, I am inspired by the foliage of the autumn. So when I see all the leaves in a, on the grass, on the grass, I think that's a work of art. So what I tried is to um, make it in bronze. When I see something that I really love, I wish to make it immortal, to make it in bronze so it, does, it won't change for centuries, hopefully. Absolutely. And is there Italian designers, architects, interior designers that inspire you also with your work from past to even the present? Ah, yes, but I admire every single st uh, style, every single um, different uh, interior design. The, mo the most minimal, the mo most decadent, the most uh, eclectic ones. I think what interests me is that uh, interiors have a strong uh, character, a strong um, definition. And did you find during this, I mean we all went through a very tragic period during the COVID period, was that a moment for you to be more creative? How did you cope during uh, that time? Yes, I had the, the chance, I was lucky enough to pass uh, three months in the countryside where for the first time I saw the blossoming, the changing of the nature every single day for uh, three months from, the, from March when it started to July. I was in the same place and this doesn't happen very often in our, with our rhythms in our life. So um, I was in the same house in, with the same tree in front of my mm, window so I really noticed how incredible is the spring and the blossoming of the nature and that was really very inspiring. That's amazing. And the changing of the colors, of the flowers, of the leaves and this was um, an incredible opportunity that I had and I was in Tuscany, so in front of the sea in Maremma. Certo, sì, so, of um, Nature is it's really the most incredible artist we could ever imagine. And did you create pieces during that time in Tuscany or did you, how did it, how does it work? Or you were in connection I, to I, here? During that time, I, I got many ideas, I got many inspiration, but I couldn't come to the foundry. Okay. So... Um, was it closed? Was, was it closed, unfortunately, yes. Was it closed? We were not allowed to travel. So I had to stay there for three, three four months. Um, but it was a very um, interesting experience which uh, doesn't happen so often in life to has to stay in, in the same place, thanks God, in the nature for three months. 
surrounded by nature in three, for three months. And do when you say you're in nature, besides taking uh, the leaves, do you draw? Like, how does what is your design? Yes, I was process? I was taking leaves. I was doing um, huge bunch of flowers, uh, picking huge bunch of flowers of. Uh, um, bamboo sticks and was, I was studying nature. I was studying leaves, I was drawing, I was taking pictures and it was very interesting. Absolutely. It was a very great experience. Oh, that's beautiful. It sounds lovely actually. Yes, being... yes. And the sea was just in front so uh, we saw dawns and you know all the moments of the year of all the different lights of the day and it was really peaceful. And can I ask you, what do you think of, when I say Italian design, as we, I mentioned before, craftsmanship, design, quality, what do you, do you think is important for people to educate themselves in Italian design? What is Italian design for you? Um, Italian design is uh, creativity and a lot of craftsmanship. That's why I repeat that all these artists and all this technique, they don't have to be lost because only Italian know how to put together um, these two particular um, speci specialities that are creations, fantasy, and, and craftsmanship. And what would you say is the, like for young enthusiasts, design enthusiasts, young designers, what would be a good tip for them uh, for the I think that they have to follow the instinct and it's enough that they look around themselves, especially in Italy, and they have so many inspiration and they have to do what they love because if you do something you love, you do it the best as you can. So you have to do, you have to follow what you love and do it with love. Okay, that's beautiful. And thank you so much, Asana. This has been thank perfect. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you for having much, us. Katerina. Thank you to the Foundry. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.